Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to discuss about prototype design pattern. So what is prototype design pattern? Prototype design pattern is also a creational design pattern just like the builder pattern or abstract factory design pattern or factory method design pattern I discussed in my last three videos. It is also a pattern which is used during the creation of an object. The main intent of this pattern is to allow us to create copies of an already created object. The question is why we ever would need this kind of pattern. When we need to create an object, we can just go ahead and create a new object using the new or if we are using dependency injection container then we are just going to ask the container to give us a new object. If we create the object as a transient object every time we ask the dependency injection container to give us the object it will give us a new object. So why would we really need a prototype pattern? Well there is one scenario why we might need to use something like a prototype pattern where we create a copy from an existing instance and that situation is where you want to copy the exact state of an existing object and why would we need to do that? The situation where we would need to do that is let's say if we are creating a very complex object whose state is created out of some database call or some HTTP call. In that case, it is not wise to make the same DB call or HTTP call every time we want to create the object. In fact, it will be much more cheaper if we can just clone an existing object and just use all the state of the object as is into a new instance. And that is where the prototype design pattern comes in. Now the other question you might have is well in that case also we can just inject the existing object and create a new object of the same type and then just set the properties right. So we can just take the existing created object create a new object and just set the property from the existing object to the new object and we should be good. Well that does not work in every scenario. For example, let's take this case of this iUser which is implemented by this user class. Now if we want to clone the user class as I mentioned through setting up the object from an existing one into the new one, the hurdle that we are going to face is the name is a getter, the address is a getter but age is a setter only. Meaning the private variable age which is part of this user class and it is part of the state we can never create it because we don't have access to this property so we cannot set it outside right. So consider this scenario let's say in this weather forecast controller we want to clone the iUser object. So we first inject iUser from the dependency injection container and in the dependency injection container I created a singleton iUser which is a new user and we are passing name and address. And here you see that we have name and address so that's the constructor and now if we go here we can also declare private read only iUser underscore user and here we say underscore user is equal to new user. So after new user we can say for the name we can say user dot name and for the address we can say user dot address. Now we have successfully cloned the user object with the name and address but whatever value for the age will be set up we will never get it. So when we try to access this user object somewhere here this underscore user object the age is always going to be zero. So that is the problem which I was trying to explain earlier that if we try to clone it this way we will always be missing some or other state. So to solve that we use the prototype design button. Now how do we implement it? Thankfully in C sharp language and the .NET framework the .NET core or .NET 5 or even legacy .NET we have an interface called i clonable. Now when we implement i clonable iClonable comes with a clone method which returns an object. So here what we can do is we can declare public object 
clone. And as you can see, and then from the clone method, for the time being, we can just return this. But this is the exact same object, which means exact same reference, so we don't want that. So what we can do is, to start with, we can just return dot memberwise clone. Memberwise clone is a method which is available part of the base object class, which creates a shallow copy of the object. Let's go back to the weather forecast controller. And here now what we can do is we can use user dot clone and then as a user. And now here, instead of all these, we can just return user and just return a user and we can just get rid of this code and just return underscore user so if we just do that and let us run this api for that we can just do dot net run and then here we can go and try it out and execute and we can see that we got the name and address as a part of the response, which did the shallow copy. And it copied the properties over, and which is going to be good enough for most of the scenario. But if you want to do a deep copy, you can still do that inside this clone. So you can you know, use members, memberwise clone to clone the object and then use deep copy to create a new copy of the object. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video. As you can see, there are situations where using a clone would really make a lot of sense instead of creating the object using new. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.